Hey, Kelly, can you hear me okay through my headphones here? Yes. Oh, there we yes, go. Yes, I can. Can you hear me good? Okay, right on. Perfect. Hey Shaq, this is Henry. Um, hey, Henry. Looks like we've got a we've got four attendees um, online with us. Great. And I think that you know maybe there's going to be some more trickling, but for uh, in respect of of their time, uh, the few that I recognize, they're pretty busy. So um, maybe we could get started in about a minute or two. If sure. That, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. You guys just let me know when you're ready and I can uh, start sharing my screen here and everything. I got it all set up and good to go. Awesome. Yeah, you should be able to share it here shortly. So, okay, perfect. Sounds good. Good. Yeah, and you guys are recording this. I can see anyway, too. So, anybody who can't make it, you can watch it. All right. I'm not seeing any more people. Maybe, maybe we can get started. Um, sure. To, to kick us off, uh, for those in attendance, um, I'm Henry, a city planner for the city of Fruta. Um, we appreciate you guys uh, joining us via Zoom uh, to um, kind of get uh, onboarded or, or join this workshop to go through our new cloud permit software for application submittals, building permit, uh, and um, everything uh, that we would typically do uh, with the city of Fruta and including the building department. Um, we have uh, Shaq with us. He has uh, been kind of our liaison for the uh, integration and um, launch of the cloud permit software. Uh, I'll give him a second to introduce himself, but uh, I just want to say thank you for all those in attendance today. Um, and hopefully uh, at the end of kind of the, the first part of the training, I think we're going to open it up to some uh, QA, QC, um, question and answer type of uh, scenario. So hopefully Shaq will be able to answer some sp more specific questions in relation to kind of the daily things that you all have. 
Um, but with that, I'll kick it back to Shaq and uh, we'll take it from here. Right on. Yeah, thanks so much for the intro there, Henry. And you guys can hopefully all hear me good and okay. Um, yeah, so as, as Henry mentioned, I've been working with, uh, with him and his team to set up the new cloud permit software. And as of January, as of this month, uh, we're officially up and running. So what better way to roll out a new software than showing you guys, the, uh, the public, of course, uh, how to actually get in there and use it uh, in the right way. So the point of today is really to just focus on, um, you know, basic things like submission, you know, setting up an account, those types of items. Um, as Henry mentioned, we'll have time for Q and A at the end, but also if you would like to drop your questions in the chat, uh, I sometimes with smaller groups like to run these informally too. So I can always, um, you know, if I see a point, I can, I can stop and sort of go back to it and uh, maybe provide further explanation. So feel free to use the chat in that way. And uh, Henry Kelly, if you wouldn't mind just helping me monitor the chat, if people are dropping questions there, that would be uh, that'd be a huge help. Yep, we got you. Awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sharing my screen here, um, and let's get going. So I'm going to hopefully all of you can now see a cloud permit login page in my browser here. Let me just zoom in a touch. Oops, not. That way, there we go. Um, okay, so first starters, uh, Cloud Permit is just a browser-based, super easy to use uh, e-permitting software, right? So now that um, now that Fruta is up and running with it, what that means is you can actually log into Cloud Permit using any browser of your choice. You don't have to download anything special. Um, you can log in using, you know, if you use Safari or Chrome or Firefox or whatever have you, uh, all you need to do is go to the respective URL and I was just looking on the City of Fruta uh, website here, and actually all that information, those URLs are also here on their website, which is great. So you can go to the building division section here, and I can see you know, how to submit a building permit, and you can also click these links that will take you right into uh, Cloud Permit, right? So once you select these links, and of course we'll provide, uh, I can even provide in the chat the respective URLs as well. Um, once you click these links, it's gonna take you to the login page that you see right here, right? So let me actually expand this out because we're gonna spend the rest of the session in here. Um, and basically all you're doing is if you're a brand new user to Cloud Permit, you're going to hit this big create, uh, create now under the register for an account. Um, to register for an account, it's really easy. You just put in your email address of choice, click yes to the terms of service, which we've all done many times before, hit continue, and you just have to verify your email. So you'll get an email notification in your inbox and you just follow those links and you get set up. Uh, very similar to lots of softwares we're used to, uh, so nothing special about that piece there. Okay. Uh, what I'm gonna do today though, is I, I have a, a, a test account set up, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and log in, and I'm gonna give you guys a few pointers on uh, next steps here. So I'm just gonna log in using this Gmail I have set up. And the first time you log in, um, it's actually going to present you with a much larger looking uh, create a new application. So you're going to see, you can see this button up here, create a new application, but it's going to be even more obvious if you have a brand new account. Pretty hard to miss it. So you shouldn't have any problems finding this button as soon as you, you log into your account. Um, but once you're in here, you're also going to have access to what we call the dashboard. Uh, and the dashboard is just your home. It's your landing page. It's got all sorts of different areas that you can use to navigate around the system um, and access any of your existing applications, which we call workspaces, uh, or of course, create new ones, right? So you can really think of your dashboard as sort of like, uh, you know, your Facebook newsfeed or your home, your, your home base, right? Now there's a bunch of different areas of the system that you can access here. And I'm just gonna draw your attention to some of the stuff at the top because these are super helpful in terms of uh, if you require maybe an, uh, some additional assistance or uh, if in this case, I have a message waiting for me, right? So at any time you can click on the little support button here and this is actually gonna take you to, um, and I'm just gonna open it up. Uh, this is actually gonna take you to our support home. So there's all sorts of different articles and videos. And I noticed Henry, Kelly, you already posted uh, some of the, the tutorials and links and on the Fruta website. That's great because those are pulled from our support site here. So there's all sorts of items. 
Um, now, if you're ever really stumped, and I'm going to uh, show you a bunch of areas you can leverage in the system to, if you're you know, caught up on a step or you might need some additional assistance, not only will I show you how you can use uh, the messaging system to get in touch with like Henry and Kelly, but we also have other features in the system like submitting a ticket directly to our team. So you have all sorts of avenues for support and assistance depending on you know, your needs. But if I'm having problems with like, you know, my password, I can just type in, you know, password and I get articles to how to change a password or how to reset a password, those types of things, right? So that support area is always going to be right here at the top. The next one is your messages. So as is implied, um, if you have one or two or maybe even three applications going, you got some messages in there, maybe it's a new message. Not only are you gonna receive uh, emails about that, but you'll have a little notifications here too, right? And last but not least, you'll, your name will be listed up here at the top right. In this case, well, I got my Robert De Niro account going. And if I needed to make changes to my profile or even just log out of the system, that's where I can access those features. So that's the navigation bar up here. The other thing is if you ever click the logo, it's actually a button, it'll take you back to the dashboard here. So that's, that's also a handy tip. Um, now, qu just quick rundown of the two sections here. You have a tasks and requests area. And what that's doing is that's, a, again, another notification area that's telling me anything that um, might be relevant to specifically my account. So I can see here that I have a, a payment due um, and it's notifying me when that was requested or, or when it's due. And I could actually just jump right into the workspace by clicking that purple button. Um, and lastly, there any new applications will actually populate from in this area here under workspaces. So I'll, I'll come back to this in just a little bit, but let's get to the good stuff and let's actually just create a brand new application because the first time you log in, this is the, probably the first thing you're gonna wanna be doing uh, and you're gonna be clicking this create new application button. So I'm gonna click that button right there. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be taken into um, a four step process to create my application. Um, and everything really just begins with a project. And you can think of a project in the system as purely just a folder. You know, we're all familiar with folders. We, you know, we have them on our desktops. We, we put stuff in them. That's the same thinking with projects, right? So what I'm gonna do the very first time that I'm in the system is I, with new accounts, you won't see any of these existing projects. I'm going to click create new project and I can give it actually any title that I'd like. So for the sake of today's example, let's just call it our January 25th example application. You can title these in any way you'd like. Lots of times uh, cities like to, uh, or the public likes to put their civic address in here, or maybe something like uh, Shaq's new build, whatever you'd like. Then I'm going to click next. And actually the first time that you log in in a new account, you won't have a state or a municipality selected. So the first time you'll just have to go, you know, click Colorado, click Fruta. And then it's immediately going to give you this overhead view, this satellite view of uh, the municipality or the city, right? And you have a bunch of ways of finding your address or the parcel that you would like to apply on. My, my favorite is to actually just zoom in and sort of use the map because um, you can, Course, you know go ahead and actually see the parcel outlines here so it's not too tricky to actually find your uh, respective property uh, but if you prefer which probably many would you can also just type in you know plum right and you'll get all sorts of different queries for your any address that has plum in it right so you can just type in a specific one 612 something right or you can use the map to go ahead and just poke around and, and select the parcel You'll notice all sorts of other property details pull in here. So like the PIN and then property codes and legal and all that. Um, so you got all that information being relayed from the, from the GIS. So go ahead, grab your parcel of choice. And once you have the correct one, all you're gonna be doing is clicking that next button on the bottom here. So I'll click next. And then the third and almost final step to creating an application is actually selecting the application type. Um, and the way it works and the way we've set it up with Henry and Kelly and, and the team um, is we have two, uh, you could think of them as sort of two areas where there's different types of applications. So what I'm gonna be showing you today is uh, as a building permit, but we also have the ability and the option to apply for a planning approval as well.
And you'll notice that if I select building permit here and I scroll down a little bit, I get all sorts of different categories that are available for me to select. So things like, you know, residential buildings, uh, pool applications, commercial builds, stuff like that. If I was to select planning, I'll actually get a whole different series of categories. So, you know, subdivisions, variances, site development, stuff like that, right? So if you're looking for the respective um, application or category to apply for, just, you know, select either of these and go down and search for it until you find it. Um, here on the left, so when I scroll down and I select a category, what else is gonna happen is let's, let's build a residential building today. So I'll click residential. You'll notice that I get a variety of other options available to me as well. So I need to tell the system sort of a little bit more about what type of residential build I'm applying for in this case. For instance, I could select, uh, you know, this being a new build, uh, maybe it's a repair, perhaps it's an addition. Right? And once I have this, the correct work type, as we call it, then I can actually select the work target, which you can think of as purely the specific building application that I'll be applying for. So would this be a, you know, a mobile home, uh, maybe a single family dwelling, a townhouse, those types of things. Right? You'll also notice here on the bottom, there's a little good to know section. And this is to assist you with uh, making sure you're, you're selecting the right category. So if I actually click, let's, let's go and click commercial. You notice I get a different good to know section, uh, signs, different good to know section, right? So this is sort of a helpful area that uh, Henry and his team can, can change and configure so that they help you guys apply for the right uh, application. But let's go select new again. And today let's do, let's do a single family dwelling here. Right? Oops, my mouse is giving me problems, there we go. Um, you'll notice there's a little other a final toggle here before I move to the next step, asking for a pre-consultation if you'd like one or not. Um, probably in the case of building, I would say most of the time uh, you guys won't really need a pre-consultation just because you'll, you'll likely know what you're applying for. But if there's any confusion with, um, you know, maybe you're not sure exactly what type of application it is, you can always click yes and then you'll notice the other, uh, these selections turn off and it, it allows you to pre-consult with, uh, with Henry and his team. But for today's use case, I'm just going to click no here and we can actually uh, start filling in and, and create the actual application itself. So let's scroll down here to the bottom. We'll click next. And finally, the very final step before we actually create the application is just a quick synopsis or a quick summary rather of what we've selected to this point. So we can basically just double check all of the information that we've provided. And once it looks good, you can click that finish and create button. Now, if it doesn't, if perhaps maybe the address was wrong, or maybe we made a, a, a wrong selection along the way, you can always use this little back button and it'll, it'll just take you back through the steps, right? So no worries, if you made a mistake, you can always go back and forth using these little buttons here. Next though. And then we're gonna click finish and create. Perfect. Okay, so now what you're looking at here is what we call, a, you could think of it as just your application. Technically we call it a workspace, but just think of it as your application. Uh, what we've done now is we've digitized the process and this is in essence your pen and paper application just in cloud permit online form, right? So you've got a variety of things going on here and don't worry, I'll, I'll walk you through all the tools that you have, but it's pretty, it's pretty simple and straightforward to actually just fill it in and submit it. The key stuff at the top doesn't change, you still got your banner, right? You'll notice that um, I have the civic address and the type of build also saved up here. So I can see it's a building permit at 278 North Plum Street. And I actually still have my map available to me. So if I click this show map button, you will see that I still have my map that I can, you know, zoom in and out on and just get a better sense as to where that application is. Hide it again. Um, and then I have some other details that are pulling in from the GIS here. So like the pin number and property code and such, right? So all that is just pulled in automatically from the GIS uh, that we just, we just completed. Now the stuff that's gonna be more important to you as new users who are submitting applications it's actually these two tools right here. So if you notice, 
I have a little tracker that tells me what current step my application is in. Um, and because we just created it, we're still going to be here at step one of five. So it's in draft status, meaning, of course, we haven't yet submitted it. We haven't provided any real information yet. Um, and it's, you know, the ball is sort of in, in, in my court still to submit it to, uh, to Henry and Kelly. Now, what this is doing, these required tasks, is this is helping me with what exactly I need to do and need to provide before I can actually sign off and submit this application. So what happens sometimes, of course, is people will be, you know, submit or they'll be filling in their application, um, but maybe they missed a step. Uh, maybe they forgot to fill in a form. Perhaps they forgot to provide an attachment. And you'll notice up here on the top right, this sign off application button is grayed out. The reason that it's grayed out is because I haven't completed my required tasks yet, right? So if you ever run into this scenario where you're like, hey, I've, you know, I've, I've didn't, I've done my tasks or I thought I did all my tasks, but why is my button still grayed out? Just read and look at this required task section and the system will be telling you with these big exclamation points what you may have missed. And there's even additional information here that's supposed to help you along the way. So for instance, I can see that I need to add the required party of property owner, right? So I haven't done that yet, so I can't sign off or submit it. Well, let's go down the, the tasks here and let's do each one by one. And it's going to make a lot more sense uh, as soon as we, we start filling it in. So step one, parties. I need to denote some parties, right? Let's open this up. And you'll notice I have little open uh, buttons here next to each of my required task sections. You can either click on the words or you can click on the little open. doesn't matter. You can open it up. And you'll notice that I have one party here. Right? And the party, of course, right now is just myself because I actually created this workspace. And because I created the workspace, the system is immediately pulling in my information, like my name, my email address, and it's actually giving me two designations. It's telling me that I am automatically the applicant because I created the application. And it's also giving me the designation of workspace creator. Again, meaning I created the workspace. Right? So, in this case, I know that I need to add an additional party of property owner, and I really have two options in doing that. Number one, I could make myself the property owner, which is nice and easy because I could just click this little pencil here, and you'll notice my information pulls in, and I could add myself as the property owner by using this little drop down menu here. Right, so that's one option. Or what I could also do is I could actually add or invite an additional party. So perhaps, uh, you know, perhaps Kelly is my property owner and it's, it's not myself. What I could do, and let me just remove myself as property owner here. What I could do is I could click the add or invite party and I could actually just either digitally invite Kelly by entering her email. I forget your email, Kelly, so I'm gonna use kelly at gmail.com. Don't worry, I won't send it. But what I could do is I could input any email address and select the designated role. So let's say property owner. And I could actually digitally send an invite that way. And, and what that'll do is that'll send uh, a, a notification to this email address and it'll invite Kelly to either set up an account if she hasn't already, or it'll just say, hey, accept this invite in your cloud permit account. And then she can basically take over the role of property owner and work with me to fill in this app, the rest of this application. But perhaps maybe, you know, not everybody wants to sign up for cloud permit. Uh, a lot of the time, especially some people that aren't, let's say, uh, out in rural areas, or they don't have an interest in using cloud permit or for whatever reason, that's okay. Because I could also just not put an email address and I could just input some details manually here. Meaning I could still get Kelly's information into the system by just filling in the fields and just adding her as well, right? So you basically have options to get all of your different parties and individuals into a workspace or into an application, right? Let me just click cancel on that one. But to keep it nice and simple today, because uh, I wanna be able to actually sign off this application and proceed, uh, I'm gonna use that first option where I am the property owner. So I'll click my little pencil again and I'm gonna just click property owner and there we go. And you'll see I get a little green check mark here and I also have a new 
uh, party role attached to my name down here that says property owner now, right? Good, so that's the first piece. Um, two options, you know, adding yourself as parties, adding others uh, into, the, into the application. Now, as we scroll down here, you'll notice the second task that I have is, it says application. Let's open this section up and let's see what's in it. So you'll see, as soon as I open it up, I have two more selections here. I have um, an application for permit, and I also have this site built or modular single family, et cetera, et cetera. What you could think of these as is these are um, digital forms, really. So if I click on one of these, it'll take me into a form where I can fill in and provide more information regarding my application. So we were, I worked with Henry to you know, put these together, and this is the type of information, of course, that the building department is after. So pretty basic stuff, you know, description of the work to be performed. I could say, you know, building a new single family dwelling. And then it's going to ask for the valuation of the work to be performed here. So let's say, I don't know, 250,000. And of course, the total area of work as well, right? So let's say, I don't know, 17, something like that. Now you'll notice that some of these uh, areas have little red asterisks next to them. So what that means is that all required fields are marked with these, meaning to actually proceed and to complete the form, we would need to at minimum fill these three fields in. Now, you'll notice there's two other fields here, like construction type and occupancy group. If you don't have that information, it's okay, it's not required, but if you do have it, you can fill in you know, anything in here, right? And then it's, it's been added to the form as well. Um, now, one other thing you'll notice is at the top, it says all information saved at said time. Uh, don't worry, this is my time, I'm Pacific. <laughs> but um, what's happening here is all the information is always going to be logged and automatically saved. You'll notice that there isn't a save button in the system. Um, that's intentional because we've all been there where, you know, we fill out maybe a much, a very long form um, or some, something of, of that nature and then we accidentally click back or our browser refreshes on us or something happens uh, and then we lose all the information. So that doesn't happen here. In this case, all the information is automatically saved, logged, and then it's just gonna be there for you to keep working with, right? So just a, just a handy feature. Once I'm done filling in the form, I'm gonna just click this back to workspace button at the top left. So no need to click on anything else. I'll click back to workspace. And now you can already see that I have another check mark here on this application task. Uh, there is a second form here. You'll notice there's this one application for permit and then this one as well. The reason though that uh, it's already giving me a check mark is just this form, there was no required fields in it. So you'll notice if I click on it, there's all sorts of other things that I could fill in, but none of them are required in this case. Um, I don't know, Henry might make some changes to that. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but for the time being, this is, you can think of it as like supplemental additional information, you know, fill it in, of course, if uh, uh, if you can and if you want to, but you don't have to in this in this case. Good. So in the interest of time, let's click back to workspace here. And let's go to the third and really final task, um, which is the attachments. So I'm going to scroll down. Um, and if you like to stay really organized, like I like to do this, I like to minimize stuff as I go. So I'll minimize my parties, I'll minimize my forms here, and now I'll expand my attachments. Now, I, like, I wanted to just keep it nice and simple today in this training environment, in this test case here. So you'll notice that for the re required attachments, there's actually only two attachments. Um, in the case of an actual application, I'm sure a single family dwelling, and Henry probably already, or I know he has it already set up in the live space, uh, but there'll probably be like, you know, 10 to 12 different attachments that you're uploading here. But the process and the thinking is exactly the same as what I'm going to show you right now. It's very easy to upload attachments. All you need to do is either you can drag and drop items right on top of this square here, or what I'm gonna do now is I could use this click here button and it allows me to select from my computer. So I can go in and grab any PDF or JPEG or document. Let's grab this site plan for instance right here. Click upload. And then you're going to see that this will upload to 100%. So I get a little progress bar right here. 
And of course, the name of my attachment or of the PDF will be right here. So I'll know if it's the right one or not. And then the, the really the, the, the one thing that you're expected to do in the system before uh, officially providing this attachment is providing what the attachment actually is. So that's why I have this little type drop down right here, as you can see. What this is doing is if I click on it, it allows me to tell the system what attachment this is because Cloud Permit doesn't actually scan the document to let's say determine if it is or isn't a site plan. It's still up to you, the applicant, to upload it and to at least tell the system that yes, this is in fact my site plan by clicking that checkbox. Once I click the checkbox, you'll notice I get a little purple one here and it also tells me of course that it is a site plan. So once, once you upload a document, and the reason I like to, to spend a little extra time on this is some new users can get a bit confused. They'll, you know, they'll upload the, They'll upload the document, but they'll forget to designate a type and they'll say, hey, I, you know, I can't click done. I don't understand why the system's broken. <laughs> it's not broken. It's just you got to use this drop down to tell the system that it is a site plan. Right. And as soon as you tell the system what it is, then your little done purple button becomes available with a check mark. What I could also do is I could also add a description here. So I could say, you know, uh, this site plan is et cetera, et cetera. If you, if you would like to provide additional information, you don't have to by any means, but if you want to, you can do it that way. And then I'm going to click done. And when I click done, what's going to happen is two things. You get a little success notification up here that it's been converted to a PDF and down here, just below my attachments upload area, I can now see that I have a new little attachment with my site plan and any description that I may have provided. Right. It's also gonna tell me that it's a new version and it'll timestamp it, letting me know at what date and time I actually provided the attachment as well. I could, if I wanted, I could also expand it and I'm gonna get even more information. I could see you know, the full name of the document here that I could download. Um, if maybe I made a mistake and I need to upload a new version of it, I could use this button. There's all sorts of other optionality in here that I can uh, now access now that I've uploaded this. You can also preview my attachment by clicking preview, right? So it gives you like a little pop-up window and you can basically just double check if, if that was the correct attachment. But I'll minimize that for now. So if you look up now with my required attachments, my site plan has been uploaded. So I get a little green banner and a number one here, but I still need to provide my architectural drawing. Uh, and the way I do that is exactly the same way that we just did. So I just click, click here. I would select, uh, I don't know if I have an architectural drawing in here, but let's pretend this deck drawing is what that is. Same idea, I go ahead, click the attachment provide a description if I wanted to and click done and ta-da, there we go. We got a site plan and an architectural drawing and they are both saved right here under my upload area. Now, as you can imagine, and like I was mentioning, this can get very busy. If you have a complex build, you might have upwards of 50 or even 20 attachments. If that's the case, you'll notice that you get little filters here as well. So maybe I'm after my architectural drawing, I could click that or I could click site plan and it'll sort and filter them that way. Right? So just, again, additional little features. Now, before I actually sign off and submit this, there are a couple little things that I wanted to uh, just show you because what will happen sometimes, of course, is perhaps you have a question about a attachment or maybe you just got caught up with uploading something and you need additional assistance. Um, maybe, you know, you were, having problems with a form filling something in or maybe even inviting a party right what you have available to you is up here back at the top of the workspace or the top of the application i'm just going to draw your attention to the this section up here you have a little area that says show messages here on the left and what this allows you to do is if i click on it I can actually drop a message in here and this is going to go directly to the building department. So to, to Henry and Kelly, and they can assist with any additional uh, questions or queries I might have. So I could say something like, you know, I'm having some issues uploading my attachments. Please help me out. <laughs> right. 
if I dropped a message in here, what's going to happen is it's going to save my message and log it just like sort of a general chat that we're all used to. Um, and it's also going to notify Henry and Kelly and their team that um, they basically have a message waiting in here and they could, they, they're expected to respond to it and provide some information, right? If Henry was to drop a message in here, then I would of course see his note and we could go back and forth um, and he could provide that additional assistance that I might require, right? So the idea of this is we're trying to get rid of all those, you know, probably lots of emails flying around or phone calls and stuff. Um, this way we kind of house it nicely within this specific application. So we can have a chat pertaining only to this application easily within Cloud Permit. Now, if Henry was to send a message back to you, um, not only will you receive notification in Cloud Permit in your messaging area in your account, but you'll actually also receive an email notification as well. Um, so you won't, you know, accidentally, let's say, miss a message and, and forget to respond to it or anything. So just note that. What you could also do um, is this other uh, email notification toggle here to the right that's currently selected to yes. You could, if you wanted to, you could turn this off. Now what's happening in the background is whenever, let's say, let's say I got a new message or we've submitted our application, um, there's certain times in the system where automated email notifications will be sent off. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment here, but especially when an application moves through the steps to, you know, submitted, in review, permit issued, those types of things, you're going to receive email notifications automatically because you're the applicant and property owner in this case, right? Now, not everybody wants to be receiving email notifications, although they are super helpful. And I'd say, you know, most do like it. Um, you know, maybe I'm a contractor or maybe I'm a, I'm someone playing a more minor role or just a, a, a role in one part of this, of this application. Then I might want to turn my email notifications off and I could do that easily by just clicking that little toggle, right? That'll turn them on and off. So you've got these extra little helpful um, items for you there. And just going back to what I was talking about at the beginning of the session, if you're really caught up and maybe even Henry's like, hey, something's acting funny, you can always go to support uh, and you can submit a ticket to me and my team as well. So you've got all sorts of avenues for assistance and, um, and support there. Okay, let's sign off and submit this and then I'll leave uh, a little bit of time for, maybe I'll pause for some questions and then go back and, and cover some other areas of the system. But you'll notice that now that I've done all of my tasks, my parties, my application or forms, my attachments, and I have green check marks the whole way through, what that means is I now have access to actually signing off and submitting this application. Um, and Kelly and I were just having a conversation before this session. I think this is, uh, people are really getting it already in terms of, you know, the party is filling in the, the forms, doing attachments. But one thing that people are missing, and I'll, I'll spend some extra time on this, is actually doing this step. So if you've provided your information, that's great, but you still got to sign it off and submit it. Because if you don't, then Henry and Kelly don't receive it in their submission pile in the system, basically, right? The way you do that is really simple. You click the big purple sign off application button on the top right, and then you're just gonna sign off the declaration here. So you'll have um, the blurb in the live environment will might be a little bit different than this, but the thinking is the same. You would simply sign off on the sign off page here, you can, as you can see, you can digitally sign off and it'll timestamp your, with your name and timestamp. And then you can click that submit application button. And what that's going to do is when you click it, that's going to then change the step. It'll kick you back to the application here or the workspace and it's going to change the step to submitted. So you are now in step two of five and you've officially submitted your application to the building department there. And now, if I go back to the dashboard, or I can click either the logo or this back to dashboard, I'll notice that if I scroll down, I can see right at the very top of the pile of my workspaces, I can see here I have my 278 Plum Street. It's a single family dwelling. I'm the applicant, the owner, and I can see here it has a submitted status, right? So now you can see that all your applications or anything that might be pertaining to, to you uh, will populate from your 
account. So you'll only see the workspaces relevant to you in here. And you can actually at any time now come into them and see what might be happening in them. So I can see that this one we just submitted and it's sitting in submitted status. But this one over here that I may have done earlier, it's already in review status, right? So I can get a nice sort of top down view of all my applications and I can come in and take a peek at what's going on here. Okay, good. Let me stop there for a moment because uh, I know it covered quite a bit. I just wanted to open up the chat here and see if anybody has any questions on those steps. Oh, nice. Nothing in the chat. Right on. Um, did anybody want to ask any questions just about that workspace creation and submission process there while I will pause? If, if anybody's got any questions like Adam or Courtney, um, just raise your hand and I'll allow you to ask it to Shaq or myself if you want. If not, no worries. And this is a, these are all recorded and these will be available to kind of look over after um, this is completed. We'll upload these on our website. Um, and again, like Shaq mentioned in the support, there's lots of uh, helpful tools there that uh, could you know, remind you how to submit for an application or, or, you know, how to see what's going on with an application. So um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to just raise your hand. If not, then uh, maybe Shaq will just continue. Yeah, for sure. Feel free to use the chat or just ask anything. Um, but what I'll do then, if there isn't any, I'm going to actually set up just uh, be one second here. What we'll do is expand this again all right let's go back down to this section good no questions is good that must mean that the system is still pretty straightforward <laughs> um, okay so you're probably wondering then you know I've submitted my application um, I keep referring to these email notifications first of all let me give you just an idea as to what those guys look like I'm just gonna go over here for a quick second give you an idea of that perfect so what those look like, and I'm just going to pull up my other browser here, is, as you can see, this is my cloud permit test account with all my email notifications. But as you can see, um, you're going to receive, and I'll open up this one that we just uh, generated, you're going to receive email notifications that look something like this. So I can see that now that my application, with it'll list the application number, um, it'll let me know when the status is now, in this case, submitted. So I'll receive an automate, automated message that says, you know, the status of your application at 278 Plum Street in Fruta is now submitted. Click the application link and you'll be redirected. So again, the thinking of course is you, the public, you, the applicants, you're probably not checking cloud permit every morning. That's okay because when your application moves through this process, moves through the steps, you're gonna receive these types of email notifications and you can just easily click open application and it's going to take you right into cloud permit right into your account right um, and actually this is sort of a good example because i use this account all the time you could see that you're going to get notifications for all sorts of things you know when your application is ready to issue when it's in review even when payments potentially get pushed to you you'll not only receive a notification but you'll actually receive um, payment instructions the amount that's due and again, links to go right into the workspace or the application. So you're gonna be very well notified and it's gonna be pretty difficult to miss anything that may have happened within your, your application. Assuming of course that you're checking your emails, right? Good, so that's what those look like. So let me just take this off to the side here. Now, the other key piece to this is let's say we have ourselves a submitted application you're probably wondering, well, you know, once it's in review, uh, what happens when, let's say Henry uh, asks me to make a change? Um, or maybe Henry and his team have decided to push a bill to you and stuff like that, right? So first of all, what I'm gonna do is, let me just, and, and I like to keep working with this application that we just set up here. So just give me one second because I'm gonna go on the, the background here, Henry, and I'm actually just gonna set up a, um, I'm actually just going to push this through for a second to the next step here. So just bear with me, everybody. I'm going to click begin review. And then let's add a fake bill to this. And we'll show everybody what that looks like as well. So 
So just give me a second here. All right, here we go. And you know what? I'm going to respond in the chat too to show you what that looks like. Second, this needs to be updated. Please provide new uh, drawing. Let's do something like that. Okay. Let's go. Please revise. Okay, thanks everybody for letting me do that. Okay, here we go. So let's just refresh our browser here. So I made some changes in the background, pretending I was Henry for a second. So as you can see, a couple of things have changed. So let's pretend, you know, a couple of days went by or hopefully not too long. Henry looked at our application. Um, you know, most of it checks out, but perhaps there's one attachment uh, and a payment that needs to be revised or updated. You'll notice that as soon as you log in, so, so two things will happen. A, you're gonna receive the email notification that I just went through, so that'll be very clear. But B, what also is gonna happen is the next time you log into Cloud Permit um, and you follow that link in the email, you're gonna be met with some new tasks and requests. And recall that I said at the beginning, this is really your notification center, so you can think of it as like your, you know, your like Facebook or Instagram notifications and that type of stuff, stuff relevant to you. So you'll see here, I've got two, two new things that were just added. I have a little red banner with something that says needs changes here. And I, again, I can see a timestamp and I can see that what needs changes is an attachment. So it's giving me just a quick like little info about what I need to do. I could actually expand this and I could see the note that Henry may have left for me. What I can do is I can actually click this little purple uh, arrow here and it's going to take me right back into my application. So I don't need to like, go down here and maybe search for it and find it. I could if I wanted, but I could easily just click this little purple button and it'll also fire me into the, the application. Um, and also I'm getting another one here. I'm getting a due payment because I just added a bill in the background as well, pretending I was the building department again. So let's do that. Let's follow this little purple arrow to application, and it's actually gonna take me right back into it. Let's start from the top. It's gonna to take me right back into the application, and you'll notice that now we're in review. So we've, we've moved to the next step, step three of six. Uh, it's in review, and actually, if I open up my messages again, and I can see my little indicator here on the top, I can see that Henry, well, let's pretend this is Henry, it's my other admin account telling me, you know, please revise documents and attachments. So you can get the idea. We can go back and forth here and we can ask questions. We can ask for more information. We can just chat in here, right? But let's go down and let's see what he's done or what I, what I did in the background. So first of all, I can see that now there's a, a fee and payment. There's a bill sitting here for me. And I can see that it's currently as, sitting as unpaid and I can actually see what the bill type would be. So I just added any bill type in here. See, it's $50, and I also have some payment instructions. So I can either, one, pay online. We have uh, the Payport integration all set up, ready to go, so you can easily just click pay online and make a payment. Um, or um, it says here I could also just drop off a check or cash at the, at the building division as well, right? So that's, that's another option. So that's nice and simple to, and, and easy to use. You can also actually download an invoice as well. So if you, you know, want access to, uh, to a, a separate PDF document that outlines this information, you can click download invoice. But let's go down here and let's take a look at the attachment that perhaps they are asking me to change. And I can see that this one right here, it says changes needed. So I, I quickly am able to determine that, yep, this is the one where changes are needed, and here's the little note they left behind for me. This needs to be updated. Please provide a new drawing. Right? So in this case, you know, I need to do, I need to provide, let's say, an updated attachment. All I would need to do is a, I could use the messaging system again to maybe ask further questions or clarifications. Or if it's pretty clear what I need to do, maybe I uploaded the wrong document or uh, I forgot a few pages from it, whatever it might be. All I need to do to provide a new drawing is, again, under this expanded little drop down here, I can just upload a brand new version. 
So I can use this big upload new version button and I could actually just provide maybe, maybe this is the correct drawing and I can easily just upload it. And what it's gonna do is there we go. Now we have our new drawing uploaded here and it even gave us a status of new version. Right, so same kind of thinking and process as before, we're just providing an updated or a revised attachment there. Right? Uh, what also happens is you'll notice I have a version one and a version two. So I never lose the log of sort of what I provided or what happened in the, in the application. I can always see my initial submission and then I can see my second uh, version right here. Right? Good. Does that make sense to everybody? This is a this is kind of a key piece because undoubtedly, you know, if you're providing like 15 attachments in a more complex build, uh, I'm sure the building department may, you know, ask for some clarification or maybe a revised document uh, using this workflow. So just uh, just be aware of that. You'll be notified on your dashboard, and then you'll just come down to your attachments section and you can provide new versions or um, you know ask for clarification and messages. Good, and you'll notice that now both are new versions again. <clears throat> now that may also happen with forms. So perhaps, you know, I filled in a form, um, but maybe my, I don't know, maybe my valuation was, you know, two, 25 million and not uh, 250,000. Whatever it might be, whatever seems fishy or off, uh, the building department might, again, request some changes or some points of clarification, and you could come in here and clarify and make updates to it. Good. Um, what you can also do is you can, I'm just going to open this up, you can also get a quick little snapshot as to sort of what's going on with the reviews. So I can see in this case, uh, you know, my application is being reviewed, it's in review, and I can see the reviewer, right? So you can just sort of gives you an update as to what, what the status of your application is and, and what's going on in here. So you can at any time just kind of come into your application and, and take a quick peek as to, as to what's happening. Good. Um, any sort of questions or thoughts? Oh, I do see something in there. Um, I see. Will we need to submit gamma to the application or in order for permit pickup? From Courtney there. Um, probably a question more for you, Henry. <laughs> yes. So um, <clears throat> we do have our building department here right now. Uh, and yes, you would need to submit a gamma uh, just like you would with uh, when you did with the county. Right, is the gamma a uh, like an attachment that's generally gonna be provided then, Henry? Is that right in that thinking? Yeah, so the, the building department will be, have processes and procedures or policies and procedures uh, mm -hmm. that some of them will be obviously identical to other building departments. Mm -hmm. uh, but the gamma is, uh, is gonna be a required submittal document in order for it to be pushed forward. Gotcha. Right. And actually, that's a really good segue. Thanks for bringing that up, because um, in the case of this example here, you know, we're doing a pretty standard residential build, but these required documents will, of course, change based on what you're applying for. So, you know, if you're building a deck, it'll probably be X, Y and Z, a single family dwelling, you know, much more than that. And Henry and his team are, can, can figure all that all in the background. So in the case of a gamma, yeah, you may you know, see that depending on the application. Yeah, and just just by way of example, um, Courtney, this is a this is the training uh, module, so it's set up for just kind of streamlined review and so you can click buttons and make it go a little bit faster. But in the um, in the live version, which you will be working in, uh, we do have the ability to those attachments is to make required attachments uh, have more of them or or more specific ones, and so the ones that you'll see when uh, you submit for a new dwelling unit uh, at some point you know, here pretty soon, there will be uh, required attachments that you need to put in there in order for that to move forward. But by just for the training purposes, it's a lot easier to just have two instead of you know, 10 or 15. Um, but this would be like you submitting uh, a planning clearance and a building permit to one location at one time instead of submitting a planning a planning clearance uh, to the city of Fruta and requesting a building permit through the county. And so this is all just kind of in-house on one software program at one location, you know, at one time that you can, obvi you can obviously do from your office 
Um, so it really does make it much more simple and integrated to, to work with. So there's not, you know, those unnecessary trips back and forth. Yeah, exactly. And good, good point, Henry, like this, this is just for really example purposes. But of course, you know, you may have upwards like 15 or 20 required attachments, but the process and the workflow is going to be exactly the same. You're just uploading, associating, telling the system what it is, and then submitting it, right? Um, let's see in here. She says thank you. <laughs> no problem. Good question, Cordy. Um, yeah, good. Any so any other questions or or thoughts really sort of just on the review step here? So kind of going back and forth with hypothetically, you know, Henry providing changes and all that. Good, good. Right on. Um, and like I said, you know, if you ever caught up, we have not only the messaging piece, but of course us as well to help out. Great. Okay, let's uh, let's get close to issuing this thing then. So what I'm going to do is instead of going through the uh, the online feature here, the paperwork stuff, just because I uh, it's the training environment, so I don't want to I I, don't know, I forget if it's actually hooked up still to the test uh, paperwork. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that we dropped off a check instead, and Henry or the building department just denoted that. So just give me a second here. I'm just going to pretend a check was dropped off. Set that as paid, nice and easy. And you'll notice that when the payment is logged in by the building department, except I lost my refresh button here, let's do that. You'll notice that when the payment is logged by the building department, now it's logged in Cloud Permit 2. So I can see it's been paid um, and I can now download a receipt. So I still have my invoice, I have my receipt available. And you know, you can download these documents. They, let me just show you what these look like. So these are handy because, you know, if you want to save this for your own records or you may want to save it on your desktop, you know, you get PDF documents like this that are in Cloud Permit, but you can save and, and generate uh, separately. Good. So payment's been made. Uh, we're still in review here. So maybe the building department isn't completely done their reviews yet, but let's pretend I'm going to go in the background here and pass this review. Let's say you know, it's been reviewed. Perfect. So again, if we update our, just refresh it here and we go down, now we can see, we see it's been reviewed, right? Application general, got a little check mark here. Um, and we would also see who the reviewer was and when the review was completed. Um, if they did leave a comment, I just left a, a sort of a very, very general comment. If they did leave a final comment on the review, that would also be shown right here. So again, just sort of a rundown of, uh, of that information. Um, one other thing I just wanted to highlight before I actually issue this permit to show you uh, what, the, what that uh, process is. Um, one other thing that sometimes, of course, pops up is at any point you can continue to add or invite additional parties. So perhaps, I don't know, maybe a consultant or a designer or just really anybody that may later on need to be added to the workspace. You never lose the ability to add or invite parties here. Right? So just keep that in mind. Um, and that also pertains to, you know, on the after permit issuance on the um, working construction side, uh, you can continue to add or invite parties. So keep that in mind as well. Good. So let us move this to ready to issue status where we're getting really close to actually issuing this application. Uh, again, you know, email notifications are going to be sent out. Uh, it's going to be very clear when your application moves ahead. Uh, and back on my dashboard, first of all, you'll notice we took care of those tasks and requests, so those are gone. Uh, but if we scroll down, I can actually see here that, you know, my, my application is pretty close to issuance. It's now in ready to issue status. I can even see that it was updated just a minute ago, you know, so you can, again, you can sort of keep an idea as to when it's been interacted with. Um, and, and just easily come into Cloud Permit to check on the status. And once the permit has actually been issued, once it's been issued out, I'm just gonna go over here. Let's just issue this out in the background. I'll show you what that looks like. So this, this step would be similar to staff uh, issuing the planning clearance and pushing that forward. So if you could imagine if you're at the front counter, uh, you would essentially be giving us the planning clearance, filling it out. We'd be you know, reviewing, let's say a new house takes uh, a day or two, maybe, maybe a little more depending on the amount we have. 
And then uh, on the back end, what Shaq is doing is essentially acknowledging that the, the payment has been received and we can push this forward to, um, to the next step. And so I, that's what he's doing in the background. So he'll, uh, the staff will be pushing forward the ready to issue. And then he's probably doing that in the background, but that's, that's kind of the, if you could imagine the current process, that's replicating what he's actually doing right now. You got it. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that, Henry. I'm just, I'm, I'm only just showing you guys what would be relevant to you, but in the background, I'm doing all the pretend reviews and issuance, right? Um, but for your purposes, ta-da, there we go. So let's say the building department reviewed it, you made the payment, they're done and they're ready to issue it. You're going to receive not only a big blue banner up here that says your permit has now been issued, show permit, but as you can imagine, you're going to be receiving all sorts of emails as well. So if I actually bring back my handy email inbox here, I can see that I've gotten a bunch of new ones. So, you know, this one in review, when we made our payment, I even received one for when we dropped that message from the, from the building department back, ready to issue. And now when my permit's been issued, I receive another one, right? So I think you get the thinking, you're going to be notified well in advance or as these things occur in your inbox. And then when you come into cloud permit, you'll see this big blue banner, you click show permit and it'll take you right down to a big purple button where you can actually download your permit as well, right? So I can download it here and actually there's a button at the top too that says download permit. So be pretty hard to miss it. Click that button and you now have access to your permit package, which will look something like this. Uh, again, this is the training environment. So we may have made some tweaks. It might look slightly different in the live space, but in essence, you got your, your cover page here with your table of contents. You've got your permit page itself with handy little tools like the QR codes. And you have a whole page on, you know, required inspections and what's, you know, if that's relevant uh, and attachments and, and such too, right? So I think you get the thinking, you get an auto-generated PDF uh, permit package here that you can, again, save, file, print, send, what have you, post on site, hopefully. Um, and all that stuff. And now our current step is officially permit issued and we have generated and issued a whole permit package on this one, right? Going back to my dashboard, I can see, same thing, if I scroll down, I can see that that's now permit issued there. Good, any questions or thoughts and such on that piece there? Right on, good stuff. Um, maybe I'll stop there for a second, Henry, just to ask, um, did you wanna leave the rest of the time for any questions, comments? Cause um, there is of course the inspection piece, but you'll just have to remind me if that's something that your building department would be, uh, you'd want me to showcase now in terms of how to request inspections or is that not, not really relevant for this session? No, I think that would be great. It doesn't look like we have a yeah. ton of, of questions. Um, okay, great. Yeah, let, okay, let's okay, do okay, good, yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, oh, right on. John said he'd. I'd like it. He's an electrician, so. Yeah. That would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Great. Okay, let's do it. So very simple stuff. Uh, inspections are very simple for for you, the public, you, the applicant. So same thinking, right? Go back into your workspace. I'm going to open this guy up here. You'll notice that now that we have a permit issued, so, and, and for those of you wondering why do I refer to these as workspaces, why not just application, there is actually a reason, and it's because of this step right here. So the reason that we call it a workspace and not just application is a workspace actually constitutes and consists of both sides or both phases, as I like to call it. There is the actual application, which we just spent the last hour in, you know, creating it, submitting it, reviewing it, issuing it. But once we actually have an issued permit, we then have access to our work and construction phase, which is where the inspections are housed and all the stuff that happens post issuance, right? So the reason that we use the term workspace is workspace uh, is, a, is a combined term for all of it, right? So together, this is one big workspace. Um, so, but again, most of your work is gonna be over here. The work and construction side that I'll show you now really is principally just for inspections, managing those. So let's hop over to this side and you'll notice we have a much simpler, just three-step process on this side. You've got a couple of things that are very similar, like the parties are the same, 
That doesn't change. You can continue to add parties or manage them that way. Attachments, you've got a fresh new attachment zone here. Um, and the reason being is if any you know, additional attachments need to be provided when inspections are ongoing, you can use this the same way. Just upload attachments and you know, tell them what type it is and then it's saved uh, on this side of the workspace. You don't ever lose any of the information we just filled in. That's always saved over here, but this is a fresh attachment zone if you can, if you want to think of it that way. But the most important piece is now we have this little area where we can actually request inspections. So you'll notice that I have a little uh, box, a little gray box for each inspection. Uh, water service in this case, you know, heating, and then final. Uh, now, of course, this is a very simple example. There's probably gonna be like 10, 12, even maybe 15 inspections for an actual single family build. Uh, but to keep it simple, I just have these three here. It'll give you a little blurb about, you know, what this inspection is to hopefully provide some info if you're not familiar already. But if you're ready to actually request an inspection, all you're gonna do is click that kind of dotted, this dotted checkered box here that says request inspection. And you're actually just gonna put in a requested date and time. Um, so think of this, again, this isn't uh, confirming the inspection, this is purely asking for uh, this date and time if you know, Henry and his team can accommodate it. So what happens here is we select a date, uh, let's say next you know, Monday, and we can select a time, uh, morning or afternoon here. So let's say you know, uh, Monday afternoon, and we could actually provide any additional information to the inspector that will, will come on site. So maybe something like, you know, please enter through the side driveway or what have you. And I will just click that create inspection request. And what's gonna happen is you'll get a little notification saying that the request has been successfully sent to dispatch, meaning it's been successfully sent to uh, the building department. And you'll notice that now I get a little box here saying, you know, my inspection is unconfirmed, but it has been requested for next Monday, January 30th in the afternoon from 12 to 4. Right? And that's it. That's all you actually have to do to request an inspection. So you just uh, click those little request inspection next to the respective uh, inspection itself and then provide your, uh, your preferred date and time. Now you might notice, and I think we set this up, Henry, so I'll just clarify it now. In the background, uh, Henry and his team can modify the available dates. So when you come in here, you know, you may not be able to request one like same day or tomorrow. Uh, it might be how you have to request it farther in the future. So you'll notice that some of these dates might be grayed out, right? But in this case, we have it set up Monday to Friday. Um, and then when, a, when an inspection is actually confirmed, so once, you know, let's say Henry receives this, uh, he says, yeah, sure, I'm available next Monday uh, in the afternoon. What will happen is, and actually I'll just uh, can actually go in the background and confirm this here, I'll show you what that looks like. Just bear with me here, because I'm playing all the roles today. Let's pretend that it was confirmed for my little screen over here. It's not big enough. Let's go with Monday, and we'll give it to Henry here. There we go. So once it's actually been confirmed, what happens is it'll turn green like that. So you can easily see that, yeah, it's got a green banner, it's confirmed, and you can expect this inspector, in this case Henry, to show up on site um, and check it out. That's the thinking there. Um, now, if you need to modify the request, that's what that little button's for. So if something changes, you could say, you know, I got to cancel this or maybe change the time. You can update. Again, building department receives notification of that. Um, but once the inspection is actually completed, I'm just going to go in here and actually complete this inspection. You will also receive, again, I'm doing all this in the background. <laughs> you will receive a report of the inspection as well and any potential notes or deficiencies or um, you know I'll even upload a little example photo here just to give you guys an idea Soon. that's past this one uh, okay here we go 
So let's pretend the inspection was done. Ta-da! It was once it's passed, it will look like this with a little pass button. And you can actually open it up and you can see any of the um, you know, possible remarks they may have left pertaining to the inspection. Any photos maybe that they've left. Uh, <laughs> this is my junk one here. Um, and you know, I could even expand this and maybe they left some comments. In this case, I didn't, but there'd be even additional comments that uh, may have been left here. So you can actually go into these inspections when they're completed and get a quick rundown as to what, what occurred, what happened, maybe what was provided, and you even receive a inspection report, which again is one of those downloadable PDFs that you can download and let me just do it this way. You can download it and same idea, save it, file it, have it, right? So in this case, I can see my water service inspection, any remarks, compliance date, you know, stuff that was left behind, um, visit date, visit result, all that stuff, right? And this actually gets emailed out as well. So again, you don't necessarily have to go, you know, prowling into cloud permit to find this information because as soon as an inspection visit is complete, another email, there's the email with the result and even the attached inspection PDF I was just in. So you don't necessarily have to go uh, digging to, to find any of this. Good, but in a nutshell, that's how inspections work. So pretty simple, just you know, request them out, um, wait and see you know, if they get confirmed or if any times need to be changed. Um, obviously, you know, once the inspection is done, you can find that information here and proceed as normal with the rest of the inspections. How is that for inspections in a nutshell there, um, everybody? Good, good. And finally, what I'll cap off with is, as always, if there's any confusion or difficulties or we need to share any information, leverage that show messages button because you still have it the whole lifetime of the workspace. Right? Nice, I like this setup. <laughs> good, I'm glad to hear it. Um, yeah, and we tried to keep it as simple as possible, right? Uh, try to mitigate too much, you know, clicking and navigating around, but we definitely have improved our like email notification system. So even if, you know, you forget to check cloud permit or uh, I don't know, you just don't have the time to go and dig in around in here, don't worry, you receive the emails. And that's why I kind of always recommend um, most to leave the email notifications on. It's just really helpful so you don't miss anything. Um, yeah. Perfect. That's pretty much all I had for today. Um, is there anything else, Henry, or anyone that you wanted me to sort of backtrack on or just spend a little bit more time? Oh, here we go. Courtney has a question. How do multiple people access the same permit? Really good question. Um, so how that works is I'm going to go back to my parties here. In this case, I set it up nice and easy. I'm just the one applicant property owner. Pretty basic scenario, but if let's say I added one of my other email addresses, oh, not shake. Let's say I added um, this individual. Let's let's make this guy like their electrical contractor, since it looks like we've got an electrical. Company. Sure, let's do this. I'll even say, hey, this is your cloud permit invite to the application at Plum Street. You know, you can actually drop any personal message in here because what happens is when you invite other parties, like this case, the electrical contractor into the workspace or into the application, um, they would receive this little note in the email itself. So I could actually click send invite and that you'll see here, there's a pending invite now for this electrical contractor. And if they go in and accept it, then what's gonna occur is they have the same access that I have. So they would be able to easily log in to cloud permit and be able to go and let's actually, you know what I'm gonna do here? Let's log out and let's log in as my electrical contractor now. There we go. Yeah, so so Courtney, in the case of like uh, adding um, parties to a new house, obviously you're gonna have an electrical person, uh, mechanical, um, maybe earthwork, or foundation or framers, plumbers. Uh, plumbers, anything like that, you can absolutely add those in. Um, so that's that's awesome. 
Yeah, exactly. And as you can see, so I've now logged in as that other user. So pretending I'm the electrical contractor, my Clive Bixby here. So not only would this electrical contractor receive an email notification to easily follow, but as soon as they logged into Cloud Permit, they would see at the very top invitation to 278 Plum, you've been invited to participate in the role of electrical contractor. And I was requested by uh, Robert De Niro here, right? So I could click accept. And now you'll notice I have the same access. I can now see the workspace. It's added my information as the electrical contractor. I've accepted my invite. It's actually pulled in my email, my information based on my cloud permit account. And now I too can come down and request inspections or basically, you know, take on the, some of the, I can assist with some of this as well. Right. So you can invite as many individuals as you want in here and you can give them their respective permissions. So, You'll notice that I'm I'm currently acting as as Clive, the contractor, but you'll notice I don't have the add or invite party button. You can give them that if you want. So you being the workspace creator applicant, you can invite parties in and you can give them additional like permissions and and sort of autonomy to, you know, invite other parties or to sort of just play their role, right? You get to manage all of that. Um, so it's a very collaborative workspace, I guess, is what I'm trying to explain. Uh, you can get as many people. I've seen applications with like upwards of 15 or even like 10 to 12 um, parties involved. And, you know, someone's probably spearheading it by doing the requests and stuff. But technically, everybody can come in and see what's going on and actually see the lifespan and, and what, was, uh, what was provided back here, right? So uh, I will, will I have to manually add subcontractors to every permit or can this be a saved template? Uh, yeah, good question. So as of right, we're actually looking into that a little bit, but as of right now, you would have to add each subcontractor. But again, if they have a cloud permit account, all it is is just putting in their email and then telling them what role they have and clicking that, the send invite button. Right. So it's really just the first sort of uh, like maybe couple applications where they're still some are still setting up cloud permit accounts and getting used to it where it might take a little longer. But once people get used to it, you just you're just firing off those invites and they're just hopping on in and they have access. Right. Yeah, really, really good point, though. So it's cloud permits very collaborative in that way. Any other questions or comments or queries on parties or inspections or anything at all? Good. And as you could probably imagine, if I dropped a message in here, I have a question too. You will see that my name, now that I am Clive, so I've got, you know, it'll denote exactly who is talking in here and it even tells me when the conversation was on the application side before permit issuance and now on the work side so again it's one one messaging system one one uh, instant messaging kind of space but it'll parse it out based on the current status or the current phase of the uh, of the application or workspace right? good and as you can imagine if I go back to my dashboard because I'm operating as my electrical contractor, I'm actually only going to see workspaces that are relevant to me. So you notice how now I have a different sort of, um, I have a different series, if you will, of workspaces in different municipalities, like, you know, I've got Iowa out here in Washington State and such. So me being Clive, the electrical contractor, I would actually only see workspaces or applications that are purely involve me or I'm, I'm a part of, right? So everybody has a unique uh, setup of, of applications only relevant to them. Great. Awesome. All right. How Thanks. was that? That was great. Um, great. Hopefully that answered uh, many of the questions that you guys have in attendance. Um, again, just remember that there are numerous resources on Cloud Permits website. Um, there's also the chat function. And, you know, always feel free to reach out if there's, you know, something that is just tricking you up in the system. And hopefully Kelly or I uh, can be able to help you out over the phone. Um, I think to, to kind of set the tone um, for the next meeting, uh, I do believe that we want to run through uh, how to submit for uh, like a planning related item, like a subdivision. 
uh, or a zoning application that requires some public hearing processes. Um, I know we do have uh, a member from from that sort of uh, area in attendance. So I think that'll be available in some of these workshops moving forward, hopefully the next one today. Um, but always feel free to reach out to staff and then we'll put you in the right direction and do our best to help you out. Um, but with that, Shaq, I thank you for your time and thank mm -hmm. you guys uh, for joining us in attendance. Appreciate the questions. And, uh, you know, we'll be having three more of these workshops. There's one more today and two more on February 15th. Thanks so much for having me, Henry. And uh, Henry, I'll give you a shout in just like 10 minutes uh, just on the planning clearance uh, stuff too, ahead of the next one. That's okay. Right on. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. See ya.